A huge shout out to Nikki Bros for his exceptional Harith gameplay. In this video, we'll break down the match, provide insights, and offer valuable tips to help you elevate your gameplay and climb the ranks. Nikki made the right decision in dealing some damage to the jungle creep. After all, the enemy minions were not yet on the mid lane. Remember that the success of your team in dominating the game quickly is usually in the hands of your jungler, so helping them farm is in most situations the ideal play this early in the game. If Saber chose to take the purple buff first, their team would have had the chance to take the Litho Wanderer. While it might only give little rewards, it still matters. In MOBA games, especially fast-paced MOBAs like Mobile Legends, any advantage in experience and goal, no matter how small, matters. Besides, it provides a temporary buff that gives temporary bonus movement speed when going through the river, and also provides mana regeneration for the killer of the Litho Wanderer and allies around them. Not sure if Nikki misplayed there, I think he did. It seemed that his intention was to dash out. Either that, or Nikki was trying to do something extra juicy. If you, or your teammate commits a mistake, try not to dwell on it too much and move on. Just like Nikki, keep your cool and just try to make up for your losses. In the end, there is no point crying over spilled milk. There was only less than 20 seconds left before the turtle appeared. It would be critical for Nikki to reach level 4 at this point. After all, a mid laner's role is to join ganks as frequently as possible. This is why if you are going to choose a mid laner, make sure they are efficient in lane clearing, otherwise, both you and your team will have a challenging time winning. Here, Nikki was preparing to trade damage against Aurora. Instead of revealing his location carelessly, he remained hidden and waited for Aurora to use her skills. That way, Nikki will be able to attack Aurora easily since she does not have any skills left to retaliate. This is one of the techniques a lot of low rank players ignore. Remember that trading successfully opens up opportunities in lane dominance. Because of what Nikki did, Aurora was forced to lay low while he was free to gain experience and gold. Too bad for Nikki's team, their jungler's objective management was bad. At that time, Saber should have already been prepared to take the turtle. Thankfully, Tigreal did a great job of harassing and displacing the enemy bomber. That was an excellent play, probably one of the best plays of this game. Knowing that Bauman died, the enemy Wan Wan should have lied low. Remember that if a teammate died near you, the odds of you getting ganked increases to 100% especially if you are a squishy hero. At this point, it's pretty obvious that Nikki's team will win. The enemy team was far too careless and seemed to have minimal to zero map awareness. Nikki utilized his mini map effectively. Since he knew where the enemies were, he went ahead and used his ultimate in order to spam his second skill which enhanced his basic attacks, allowing him to take a huge chunk of the turret's shield which gave him a significant amount of gold, and eventually, destroying the enemy turret itself. Since the mid lane outer turret has been destroyed, their mid lane minions can push further in, thus allowing Nikki to join more team fights. Again, thanks to Nikki's map awareness, he saw the brewing clash on the bottom lane. Sadly, he misplayed and forced the kill resulting in Harith's demise. Seems Nikki enjoyed the game too much. Enjoying too much can sometimes make us careless. The turtle has respawned, so Nikki has to move fast and help in securing it. Good thing their aroma was there to drive away Bauman. With that, Nikki and Saber will have more time to farm a little. When something important is happening such as attempting to secure the turtle, try to hover your screen over the area in order to make the best decision. It's not always a necessity, and usually, looking at the minimap is enough, but hovering over key areas in some cases can help you better. When you are playing as a mage or any squishy hero, it usually is a good idea to utilize the bushes and prevent the enemies from easily figuring out where you are. Doing so gives you the first strike's advantage. Almighty push! You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Here we go! Rise!
As you can see, since the mid lane outer turret has been destroyed, Nikki's mid lane minions were surviving longer, thus capable of pushing further in, and because of that, he was able to join more team fights. When playing as a mid laner, remember that one of your goals is to dominate the mid lane as early in the game as possible. Again, utilize the bushes to your advantage especially if you picked a squishy hero. Let your tanky allies engage first, and once the enemy heroes are committed to a fight, engage and position yourself well. Keep them within your range, but stay outside of their range. Wan Wan is showing signs of dominance, it's ideal for Nikki to get Winter Trenchant as soon as possible. It is one of the best items you can buy against Wan Wan especially if you are playing a speedy mage like Harith. With three enemies dead, they can go ahead and secure the game here. Almost forgot, this was Nikki's build in the game. Stardium Scythe is an excellent item for heroes that cycle between skill damage and basic attack damage thanks to its unique passive that enhances the user's basic attack after each skill cast which allows them to deal an extra true damage. Not to mention it is also packed with very useful stats such as hybrid lifesteal and cooldown reduction. Feather of Heaven is another item that capitalizes on heroes that rely completely or partially on their basic attacks to deal damage. It enhances the user's basic attack damage magically and also has bonus stats that can make any mage hero a DPS powerhouse. He also had Clock of Destiny which is a useful mid and late game item, Divine Glaive for magic damage penetration, and of course Winter Trenchant to counter Wan Wan's ultimate. Overall, this is a good offensive build which is applicable for most situations. As for the emblem set, this is what Nikki used. This configuration was focused on helping Harith gain a thicker shield by having high magic power. After all, Harith's shield strength depends heavily on how much total magic power Harith has. This configuration also allowed Nikki to cycle through his skills faster thanks to the cooldown reduction. Bargain Hunter was a good choice which helped him finish the game faster thanks to the discount it provides when buying equipment and finally, lethal ignition to help Harith secure kills effectively. That's our Mobile Legends content for today. If you want more content like this, show your support by liking the video, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Stay safe everyone. Peace.